This is part two of three parts all about making the Jack Russell show ready. Welcome back in the second part of the Jack Russell Terrier video, Luna, our princess. This is Kitty for Transgroom TV and today it's all about taking care of the Jack Russell Terrier coat and making Luna ready to go to the show. She's been groomed two weeks ago and I'm surprised how many hair there are still on there because like two weeks ago I thought I have plucked out too much but apparently not. A lot of hair has grown further back but when you open the coat you do not see the coat that I pulled two weeks ago coming out again so that's going to be for the next video in two other weeks. Let's not wait and let's do some grooming. If you see any products I'm using and you have interest, please scroll down below and there will, you will find the link to the right products. Here you see Luna, how much coat there's still left after the first part two weeks ago. It's surprisingly because I thought it was going to be much too short. Okay, let's do some brushing. I like to open up the coat so you see the right volume, you see all the hairs is, are loose and then towards me for the profile you see more where you need to go finer, go uh, flatter or just shorter. Here you see me using the Smooth Touch Small Slicker Brush and I'm using this because it's very soft the pins are all very close to each other and it's ideal for opening up the coat and making sure if there's a little mat, everything comes out. Let's do some eye care. For the eyes, I like my face comb very much, all the dirty stuff, the little crusty bits. You just comb it and all the crusty stuff is on the face comb and you can just with, an, with a wipe or an eye wipe or an ear wipe or a, any wipe you can just wipe it off and it's very clean and then you can use the normal tear stains you can drop it in and around the eyes and with another wipe you just wipe everything off and we have clean eyes. We are skipping ears and nails because we've only done ears and nails two weeks ago but let's do some carding. So much hair is coming out again. It's very necessary to card because all the hair is actually in the follicle and as you can see Luna has a lot of hair and many dogs have a lot of hair and every follicle is full of hair so when we pull out the wool and all the soft hair we make place it has space to create new coat, a healthy coat, good color coat and all the bad stuff is out. It's very easy, just comb through with a very fine stripping knife. Just hold the stripping knife like 45 degrees, so not like this, not like this, but like halfway. Don't push the skin and an easy way to know if you're pushing too much or too less, just go over your own arm with the stripping knife and then you'll have, you know, the right touch to, to do on the dog. I'm saying this because you never know, it, they are like teeth and sometimes I see people like pushing too hard and you know, you don't realize when you're doing it on the dog how soft or how hard you are doing. So when you are using yourself to test, it's ideal. Just make sure everywhere you can easily touch like the whole body until the legs and also the back, the sides, try to do as much as possible the carding. Don't go over the feet or the legs because there we need some longer hair and we are going to strip the top part out but there we leave the under wool as much in because there we need to have the volume and we need to pluck it with a stripping knife or even with our fingers. I like to use the Showtech 40 extra large stripping knife and afterwards I like to go over the whole coat with a shed stopper and any hairs that the fine stripping knife didn't take out I will take out with the shed stopper. <laughs> 
Let's do some stripping, hand stripping. In the last video, we didn't finish the full front legs, so this is why I'm starting with the front legs first. I'm combing everything up with the palm pad and just with my tip of my fingers I'm taking the tips of the hairs out that are coming out too long. So I'm not pulling very deep, only the tips. And I'm constantly brushing and stripping and brushing and stripping. You see me using the finger condoms and the finger condoms are made of latex. And I don't know if you ever use latex but if you go with a finger condom like over your arm you will feel the hair pulling because they are so grippy and they are very nice to use i just like to use them for pulling out the long hair on the legs here you see me holding the hairs and the legs with my left hand and I'm pulling with my right hand because otherwise the hairs are coming and I'm pulling on the legs and it's very easy if you hold it a little bit with your other hand and here you see me brushing constantly and pulling and repeat so here I'm not going to go too short I'm just going to make sure that the top layer is gone and then I'm always thinking in myself if I pull out a hair four weeks later there's going to be a new hair so if I pull out every two weeks a bit it means that underneath I'm going to have hairs which are two weeks old, four weeks old, six weeks old, eight weeks old and I'm going to have a full voluminous set of layers of different hairs and it's always going to be voluminous. If I would just let the hair grow all the hairs would be one length and they would fall down and I would, it would be very difficult to get volume in the legs. Here you see me pulling at the back of the front leg near to the pads. The hair is very soft there and I like to use the solid stripper. The solid stripper has no teeth, it's only like a, a very rough edge and it's very good for soft hairs and even the between the feet and the, where the hair is very soft it's just very nice to pull it with that solid stripper. As you can see I can't go very much shorter on the neck and on the shoulders. Between the hairs you see the skin. We don't want to take everything all out. That's why the video is in three parts because it's going to take four weeks for the first hairs to come back. So two weeks ago was the first time, now is the second time and in two weeks time you will see a white chest and a white shoulders because that's exactly what we want at the dog show. And here you see me with my fingers just behind the ear taking a little bit at the time, just small bits of hair and I'm trying to, with my other hand, to keep the skin tight here you see me helping myself with some grooming chalk where the hair is very soft and really difficult to grip. Whenever you have that problem you can use the grooming chalk. So first of all with the chalk it's going to be more standing up, more volume and for gripping and for styling it's much better. Here at the shoulders we don't want the shoulders to go in and out. As you can see here on the drawing, the shoulders need to go like here and where the shoulder is going in, you see the line going very straight. Here I'm lifting up the front leg because automatically when the front leg is lifted up, you will tighten the skin and every time you pull the skin won't come with you. I keep coming back to the neck because the hairs are sticking out and it's not really very nice but I also don't want to go bald so I'm you know trying to leave it and then it's like bugging me so I have to come back to the neck and do some more and I'm trying to leave it going to another spot and then I'm going to come back again because it was sticking out too much. I'm trying to explain you see the top view from the neck everything which is sticking out there too much needs to come out and uh, at the dog show we need to have that very flat so it's very necessary to start early for preparing your show dog. Here you see me working again on the feet with the solid stripper. 
and I'm just brushing everything up and everything which is coming out instead of scissoring it I'm stripping it and the reason is I had too much scissor work done on the legs and then everything comes very very soft so then you have to come back to your original grooming and strip everything and then after a few weeks months the hair is going to be all hard again and it's okay to you know to do the scissor work a little bit but it's very easy to do and each time you do it the hair comes soft and then when the hair is soft the dirt will go into the cuticle I prefer to keep the balance very well between the scissoring the feet and the stripping here you see in slow motion how little hairs I'm taking out at one time with the feet and here you see me using the scissors so now most of the hair is okay and I am okay to scissor a bit I just don't want to overdo it with the scissors if you don't have a palm pad it's okay just use the comb and comb everything up but keep on combing and styling and then seeing which hairs need taking out here it's copy and paste of the other side I'm lifting up the leg just to make the skin tight and so when I'm pulling I'm not pulling like the skin towards us and here I'm just explaining that I'm putting like my finger in her ear to give it some volume and you can keep the ear tight when you are pulling that it's not like every time pulling out the ear and here also I'm using the solid stripper with no teeth and I'm doing just really little bits at the time for the ears because it's very sensitive and we don't want the dog to feel uncomfortable by pulling out too much and here you see me working in slow motion also on the inside of the ear we try to take everything out as much as possible and here you see which hairs I'm plucking all the hairs which are sticking out on the neck have to come out and again everything brushing forward and then just plucking everything out again so for the neck I'm showing how long the hair still is it's about two centimeters the top of the neck is long and then the sides go like shorter and below the ears it's going very short but most important very flat and when you look from the side the side needs to be short the top can be a little bit longer but also not too much and the top layer we wait until last because the top layer of the neck needs to be on the same line as the back line so here I'm saying I'm going to leave that long hair for last and do the sides of the neck with the shoulders and the, the chest but the top line I'm leaving for last. And that's the advantage of you know grooming every week or every two weeks and having the different layers because if you don't groom every two or one or three weeks you don't have the different layers because if every time you wait like four months or three months you pull and it's empty below you have no more hair so the only thing in that case you can do is pull everything out and here for the head I'm also using the solid stripper I'm just brushing everything out and I'm not trying to go short but I'm trying to style a bit by brushing and then making a straight line so nothing is sticking out too much now the Jack Russell is not like starting here it's starting more backwards the, the beard and the head and it's not like a schnauzer but it's like more softer you go from the long beard into shorter shorter and shorter again but it's not like you can groom it until the eyes and then there's a line with the Jack Russell it needs to be as natural as possible and if necessary you start the beard further down but it needs to be like in one line with the head without going first the head then and then going in here and then the, the beard so it needs to be one nice line square when you look at it from the top view like we see now 
the eyebrows of the Jack Russell are not going in, it's one part. It's not like a schnauzer where you have the two parts. It's just one part and it's just uh, brushing up the eyebrows and taking out the longer bits. Also from the beard, we don't let the beard like grow and grow and grow, no, we also make sure there's always new hairs coming out because it's like chunky and it needs to have volume and also in the beard and the moustache we take the longest part out and that way always you have new hairs coming out and the colour stays very nice by doing that as well. So here you see very nice I'm only taking out the top layer, the longest part and that's Luna's eyelashes not to be touched and now you see me starting the tail also at the tail, I'm waiting for new hairs to come out. That's going to be in part three where you won't see any more pink skin. But as you can see, the tail is much too long again. So we're just brushing and taking out the top layer a little bit at a time. And here I'm still doing the sides of the tail and to help me out a bit with styling the tail and so the hair is going to stand up more here you see me using the chalk powder here you see a drawing figure one is like a tail where they've stripped the back and then the tail without thinking about the way the dog looks in profile and here you see like the dog has a very long neck and suddenly you have the tail and in the drawing too it's been carefully stripped and you don't see uh, the back and the tail. The back is actually a part of the tail and the tail is a part of the back and you don't have the impression the dog has a very long back. So while you are doing the top part of the tail it's very important you hold the tail in position upwards and then you take the sides. It's very easy to style the base of the tail and the back while you are holding the tail up. Figure 3. This is what happens when you're half on your phone and keep on stripping without concentrating. It's too short, it's long and it's pointy. Figure four is what we need. This is a carrot, it's a thick carrot and it doesn't have a point and it still has some hair on it. Just brush, strip, brush, strip and repeat until you have the good form. Also the back is very important. Above the anus needs to be really short because there you can, when the dog puts the tail up, you can see how short the dog is and what a nice angulation he has on the bum and on the legs. So the back of the tail really needs to be short. Here in slow motion you see me working on the sides and with my fingers I'm trying to hold my hand on the dog and push down a bit to keep the skin straight. Here you see me working on the angulation and I'm trying to go extremely short above the hook for the angulation. So I'm going short at the tail and then I have a rounding and at the hook again very 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 short. Here you see me going from the tail the rounding of the bum very short at the hook and back out. So in out, in, out, in. After the stripping, some scissoring at the feet also is okay. And here now on the other side also the angulation. It's actually where the dog is going in when he moves his leg, where it's going extra short. If you see the skin there, it's, it doesn't matter. The hair is going to come back and the dog's going to have a good angulation. Here you see the top line where it's still very bally, it's going like in and up. And now we're going to take more hair off where it's going up too much to create a horizontal line. So now I'm constantly going to brush and take off the top part. As you can see I'm not stripping at the same place, I'm going 
from away from me towards me and then I'm gonna brush or with my hand I'm gonna touch the skin and I'm going to be the, doing the same time. If I strip four times at the same place I might have a hole in the coat so it's very important you keep on brushing and very much looking and then you can strip. I like the Yento coarse stripping knife very much for doing the long hairs from a show dog. I like it because it, it's very good in my hand, it doesn't cut the coat and I'm only using the top point and I can work very precise with it. Here you see how I push my thumb on the shoulder and let the long hairs slip in between and then like I push my thumb and I just have a little bit hair where I'm stripping. And that was a very quick pause to first of all let Luna do what she needs to do and I had a good look at Luna to see how she's running and I've seen a bit here and a bit there which are things that I could change. Sometimes it's good to get a pause, uh, the dogs are tired and they want to sleep. It's not always possible but it's a very good thing to have a pause and just let them run outside and then come back in and they're happy again. Here you see the difference in the back, like the rounding in the back is uh, mostly gone. It's not all the way down, it's going to be for the part three where you will see a straighter back. Here you see me lifting the back leg and where my fingers are is short and I'm just trying to make the line and while I'm lifting it's very easy to pull out the longer hairs. And even there you can use chalk or here I was also using the Hydra volume powder to make the hair stand up a bit more so I can style and easy work with the voluminous long hair on the legs to pull the right hairs out. As you can see here you don't need to use a lot. I just sprayed and now I can just brush up the coat and for styling it's better and easier. Here on figure one you see what would happen if you would just strip out all the hair at the groin. As you can see then you have a very long looking dog. On figure two we left the hair and we did the tummy short but at the groin we left the hair and as you can see the dog looks normal and looks very much shorter. This was part two from the three part video how to groom a Jack Russell Terrier and as you can see Luna is looking a little bit more like a show dog. Luna is very funny when she's jumping in long grass. She thinks she's a rabbit. <laughs> And here you can see her jumping along and playing with her best game ever, finding a stick and bringing him back and having fun in the grass. Here you see more pictures of the second session before and after and as you can see she's changed a little bit more. Thank you for watching, please subscribe to our channel to see more videos. If you have interest in any products I've been using, you can find the link down below. Next part is the final part of the three videos and there you will see a show dog ready Jack Russell Terrier. So see you in two weeks.